Alright, so here we are in my neighborhood, the Dunbar Spring neighborhood in Tucson, Arizona. And we uh, are perhaps just coming out of a record drought. Uh, we just got uh, two good rains, a 0.7 of an inch rain and a, a few days ago and a one inch rain last night. Um, but prior to that, we had been uh, record drought, driest year on record, only four inches of rain in the full year. So stuff was getting pretty desiccated. A lot of plants were dying around town. Um, and we've also been having record heat. So uh, I wanna show you a simple strategy that makes the most of whatever rain you get, even if it's a super drought year. So uh, we are planting the rain in these street side water harvesting basins. Last night, the majority of the water flowed down the street and out of the system, okay, all over Tucson. And it's crazy, you know, we finally get rain in a record drought and then we let it go. What are we thinking? So um, here, we flip that around. So uh, with our neighborhood foresters effort, we um, first, well, we cut uh, the curb at an angle that is with the flow of water and also down into the basin. Basin is lower than the street. And uh, that way we turn street runoff into street side soak in, okay? So runoff to run on and that's right on, okay. So in the basin here, we got a good foot or more depth of water filling the basin last night and then infiltrating. And I wanna show, do a little comparison. So here we've got a typical Tucson landscape where there's no basin. So the majority of that 1.7 inches of rain that fell this week was lost that hit here. And I, I did a little experiment where I dug down here and you can see we only got an inch, maybe two inches max of uh, water infiltrating in this area. And then it's just dry. There's, there's no moisture there, okay? So uh, within a week, all that's gonna be evaporated. But then you come into the basin here and I dug down. So the shovel blade's about a foot deep. So we've got about a two foot depth. And I got tired and I stopped digging. But all this soil, and here's the soil I dug out, this is just saturated with moisture, okay? So we are banking that previously wasted street runoff in these street side basins where we're growing native food bearing trees and understory plants um, that also create great wildlife habitat and will grow to create shade. So uh, this does not increase the chance of mosquitoes, it decreases it because we are doing subsurface infiltration not surface infiltration. Within an hour, all the water that pools here is infiltrated in the soil. Then we hold on to that moisture even longer while also increasing the rate at which that water infiltrates because uh, after we create our basins and plant it, we put in this mulch. So this, this basin here, this is only um, yeah, six months or so uh, old because we, we did this in, uh, in March. Okay, now we're in uh, July. So uh, we, the, yeah, so we've got this great spongy mulch, which is just gonna get better over time because of the vegetation we planted. All really small, because we only planted uh, one gallon understory plants and five gallon trees. Um, but we, and we did small plants because they're cheaper. It's easier to dig the hole and they get established much faster than bigger plants. So we save money, we save resources all around. Um, and with this awesome infiltration of the water, it's not gonna be long. Within 10 years, that tree is gonna be a really good canopy tree, shading both basin, street, and public walkway. And it's just gonna keep growing bigger uh, as time goes on. And we've got this great understory plants here. And we also planted a few things by seed, such as this coyote gourd, which um, has a big tuberous root, which gets bigger and bigger, breaks up the soil. It goes dormant and disappears in the dry time. It comes back uh, with the rains. Um, and there's a lot more seed we've planted, which like some native grasses are starting to come up, all of which will pop up here. That's a good cheap way of planting. 
but it works best if you plant the rain within these basins and then you plant the seed. Because let's say we don't get any more rain this year. That's very possible. That would be what happened last year, basically. Well, everything planted here has got abundant moisture. It's going to do good. The, the seed that germinates, the roots of that germinated plant are going to follow that moisture down. Whereas if you plant in this type of scenario, everything's going to be dry in a week. And if we don't get more rain, that's, that's it. Um, you're going to lose that plant. So uh, if you want to get more information on how to do all this stuff, uh, the neighborhood efforts that are doing this planting of rain and then native food forests uh, within the public right-of-way, check out neighborhoodforesters.org or Dunbar Spring neighborhoodforesters.org. And uh, for books on step-by-step, -step, how do you do all this? How do you figure it out? How do you think in this new way? Check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond, and the website, harvestingrainwater.com. Uh, and uh, you can get those books direct from me at deep discount. Avoid the middle person. Don't support the big corporations, but go to the people doing the creation of this stuff so I can create more of the stuff, again, at harvestingrainwater.com. Uh, so, just to wrap it all up, I started by talking about this record drought. Well, what frustrates me and why I want to do this little video this morning is I saw the bulk of the rain that fell last night run into the streets and run out of our community. So, you could think, hey, we got 1.7 inches of rain, drought is over. Nope, the drought continues in the majority of Tucson because this is the majority of the situation where we're not holding on to that water when it falls. But everyone that's doing this is planting the rain, infiltrating it deep into the soil, reducing water loss to evaporation with the spongy mulch um, that also improves soil fertility and more soil life, which then burrows into the soil, breaking up the soil more and increasing the rate of infiltration, increasing the length at which that moisture is held. This is the good stuff. This is the life stuff, the life cake. Our life is at stake. So let's life make. <laughs> uh, and, uh, um, and it's all super simple. You plant the rain, you don't drain the rain. And once you've planted it, plant the life that is particularly well adapted to your area. The food and medicinal bearing, indigenous vegetation. That's why I start, because that's the easiest to succeed. You can expand that diversity, but start there. All right, well, thanks for watching. Again, check out harvestingrainwater.com and neighborhoodforesters.org.